coming up on Microsoft Insider. How secure is your PC? Resumes, family photos, tax returns? Your computer is a valuable vault of information. What are you doing to keep the cyber criminals locked out? Today, learn how Microsoft is working to help keep your computer safe and get three easy steps to better security. Then, watch for our secret code word, and you could win from a selection of PC protection software, a Zen digital jukebox from Creative, or a Windows XP Media Center Edition PC. All next on a special security edition of Microsoft Insider. Hello and welcome to this special security edition of Microsoft Insider. You know, we all take great steps to make sure our prized possessions are safe and sound. We put alarms on our cars and we lock our doors, all in an effort to keep the good stuff in and the bad stuff out. But what are you doing to protect the valuables stored inside your computer? We use our PCs a lot, from storing private bank statements to sending priceless family photos. And thanks to the internet, we can communicate that information at record speeds. But opening yourself up to the World Wide Web opens up your computer to a host of security threats. Threats that can rob you of things an insurance company might not replace. We hear about cybercrime more and more. From identity theft to viruses and worms, the stories can be scary enough to make many of us want to avoid technology altogether. But is it realistic to run away from those threats? The FBI doesn't think so. Technology is here, it is here to stay, and I want to become more advanced and more sophisticated as time goes by. It's important to be knowledgeable of the threat out there to protect yourself against it. So who are these cyber criminals? And what is their intent? Steve Lipner is a director leading Microsoft's security engineering strategy. There doesn't seem to be any real pattern that identifies the people who write these viruses or describes their motivations. Con artists for years perpetrated their crimes against unwary citizens face to face. As telephones uh, became popular, they uh, used telephones to perpetrate the crime. And as computers were created and became more popular in households, uh, criminals have used the old con art artist tricks to cause people to release information to them over the computer they would never do face to face. The truth is, the crime vary as widely as the criminal imagination. There are some cases of, of cyber crime for financial gain. A hack into your system can cause your own personal financial and medical information to be compromised. Corporate and industrial secrets can be compromised. Systems can be overloaded. Entire systems can shut down. But in other cases, it's just pure vandalism. As cyber crime expands, government and private organizations are mobilizing to stay one step ahead. An example of that is Microsoft's Trustworthy Computing and Security Group. Trustworthy Computing is an initiative that was kicked off by Bill Gates in January of 2002. Debbie Fry Wilson is the Communications Director for Trustworthy Computing. It's important to remember that individuals who engage in these malicious attacks are engaging in criminal activity. Well, increasingly we work very closely with the victim companies, whoever that company might be. Often they are in possession of the most detailed information about their own system, and they are in a better position to help themselves by helping us solve the crime. We work very closely in partnership with law enforcement to make sure that these individuals are targeted, that they're found, and that they're brought to justice. So what is the cost of cybercrime? Uh, I don't believe there's any hard numbers, but I would estimate. I think it would be fair to say that the cost is billions annually. One of the most common forms of cyber attack is through what is commonly referred to as a virus. A virus is a piece of software code that's been designed to cause damage to your computer. Usually there has to be some kind of user interaction to trigger the virus before it can attack your computer. For example, if you were to open an unwanted email attachment or visit unknowingly a malicious website, those kinds of things can trigger attack with a virus. One type of virus becoming more and more common and very difficult to detect is a worm. So it's a, a, an attack that happens on your PC without your knowledge or without you having triggered it in any way. The truth is, it's impossible to know what to look for because cyber attacks are constantly evolving. 
Initially, viruses were uh, were just programs that were uh, spread around by uh, by being put on floppy disks, and you'd give somebody a floppy disk, they'd run the program, and the virus would infect their machine. And as the growth of the internet and the ability of computers to communicate with one another was enhanced and became greater throughout the world, viruses started to spread more and more over the internet. Those more sophisticated forms of sabotage require users to be more responsible, not only for self-protection, but also to protect others. It's important to keep your PC from being taken over and used to attack other machines on the internet. Machines that have been taken over in this way are called zombies, and their owners may not even know that they're being used in that way. Fortunately, as cyber criminals get more inventive, authorities and private organizations are getting better at increasing our security. Well, first, don't be afraid. Second, understand that the FBI has embraced cybercrime as one of its top three priorities. It's not something that you can ignore, but it's also not something to be afraid of. Did you know that with the expansion of technology over the last dozen years, attacks on PCs have increased roughly 10,000%? Maybe you're worried about the safety of your PC, or maybe you have friends that are worried and they look to you for advice. Either way, the safety concerns are legitimate. But there are proactive things that you as users can do to help protect yourselves. Microsoft has outlined three very simple steps toward PC protection. Before we get to those, you need to determine what's already on your PC. Maybe a friend or a family member installed your software and you're not sure what you have or if it's reliable and up to date. But it's easy to find out. Microsoft's Protect Your PC website is a new one-stop shop for helping to increase protection over the contents of your PC. In the first six weeks of its launch, the site has been visited more than six million times. Along with easy instructions for taking three simple security steps, the site can help to identify what sort of protections you already have installed on your PC. The website gives you specific recommendations for your needs. All you do is select the operating system that your computer is running on. If you don't know what that is, there's help for that there too. Microsoft.com slash protect. It's a quick and easy maintenance check right at your fingertips. Leaving your computer unprotected is sort of like leaving your door open while you're on vacation. You wouldn't do it because it's an invitation to trouble. Simply sending and receiving email or surfing the internet can expose you to harmful attacks by people just looking for an open door. So how do you help shut them out? That's step one in protecting your PC, installing an internet firewall. Craig Lane is a group product manager for Symantec a leading developer of PC protection technologies. He says the concept of a firewall is nothing new. Firewall was originally designed to help prevent the spread of fires between two apartments in an apartment building. So it was designed to help keep a disaster happening in one part of the building from spreading to another part of the building. And that's exactly the way a computer firewall works. It tries to keep a disaster that's happening out on the internet from spreading and moving into your PC. Neil Malik is a broadband networking program manager at Microsoft. One way that I like to think of a firewall is as a lock on the door to the internet. And uh, I want to make sure that only people that I want to have visit my computer can visit my computer. I want to keep all of the people out there that I don't know about from entering my computer. And a lock is a great way of doing that. A firewall is really your first line of defense against internet-based attacks. That first line of defense is important because some viruses can come to you in many ways. These are often called blended threats. A blended threat is a, a particularly nasty thing that's came across in the last couple of years, and it actually uses several different methods to try to attack your PC. So if you block two or three of the methods that it might try to use, it still has two or three tricks up its sleeve to try to penetrate your defenses and attack your equipment. An example of a blended threat that made a lot of headlines was one called NIMDA came about a, a couple years ago, it actually would spread to you by uh, opening an email attachment was one method. You could also just visit a web page, it would detect you just by looking at that web page. And it could also spread to you by looking at, uh, as you went to shared drives on the network and just access files. There are people on the internet that basically collect access to other people's computers so they can use those computers to do things that are illegal. 
the computer bad guy at that point is trying to turn your machine into a little robot for him that he can use as a springboard to infect other PCs or as a way to communicate with infected PCs that are out there because the attacker wants to remain anonymous so he can actually use your PC and it'll make it look like you're the one that's attacking everybody else. So it's a way that he can keep anonymous. So how does a firewall provide a first line of defense against attacks like these? In a sense, it helps to make your PC invisible to people you don't make contact with. Now, if a hacker were trying to access my computer, what would happen is the firewall would say, I don't know anything about this data that came in, so I'm just going to ignore it. So it wouldn't respond to it in any way, so the hacker wouldn't even know that my PC was there. What a firewall really does, it's kind of like putting bars around the windows of your house. So it tries to prevent bad things from getting in and also things that are valuable in your house from getting back out. So it can actually protect both directions uh, and some of the things that a, a blended threat might try to steal from you are passwords or credit card numbers, other valuable information that is on your PC. When it comes to firewalls, there are two basic types. There are hardware firewalls and software firewalls. A hardware firewall, you normally see that in a home networking environment. And that's going to give you both a hardware firewall and, and lots of connections for your home PCs. For most home users, a software firewall is an adequate first line of defense. Personally, as one PC at home, we recommend a software firewall. Uh, most of the hardware firewalls come with additional connections for multiple PCs. So you'd be buying more than you're really going to use. And the software firewall will protect your PC from other PCs you know, and the internet itself. So that's the best choice for a single PC household. For people with Windows XP, you don't have to go far for firewall protection. Windows XP has a built-in firewall, so there's nothing to install, and it's really easy to turn on. You can go to www.microsoft.com slash protect for instructions on enabling your Windows XP firewall. Earlier versions of Windows, such as Windows 2000, Windows Millennium Edition, Windows 98, or Windows 95, don't come with built-in firewalls. However, you can acquire a firewall from a third-party provider. They don't require a lot of knowledge for you to set up, and they'll even train themselves over time. So as they watch how you work, they'll get better and better at protecting you. The Internet brings us a lot of values, and we shouldn't be scared of that. We shouldn't let people keep us from that value. So I think the right thing to do is take steps to protect yourself, but don't live in fear, and still use these great things like the Internet that are enriching our lives today. One thing to be aware of with firewall protection is that when you receive email, you're essentially requesting all the email messages that are sitting on a server addressed to you. The firewall views all incoming emails as something you've asked for, and therefore it may not screen out some unwanted material. This is one of the reasons why a firewall is only your first line of defense. Here are added tips to help you increase your guard against email and internet scam. Recognize this? The SWIM worm was a fraudulent email that pretended to contain an important Microsoft security patch. It was actually a ploy to get users to unknowingly download the worm hidden within the email. One thing that we don't ever do with security patches is distribute them in email directly. If you receive an email with an attachment that claims to be a security patch, it's bogus and it's a virus. Microsoft never sends security patches as attachments to email. Another common email scam comes in the form of email that appears to be from a reputable business, requesting lost or newly needed personal information. Don't ever send personal information like a credit card number or social security number over email. Make sure you only provide personal information on a secure website. How do you know if the site you're visiting is secure? The status bar in the lower right-hand corner of the screen will have a padlock or key icon showing. Watch for these things and you can surf more safely. Imagine if a trusted automobile service told you they'd come to your home on a regular schedule and provide hassle-free tune-ups for your car. That's basically what Microsoft's second step to greater PC security could be compared to. It's all about maintaining more solid and secure software with very little effort on your part. Debbie Thiel is a program manager at Microsoft. We know that to keep the car working properly, it needs to be serviced from time to time. Not everyone understands that when it comes to your PC, similar precautions need to be taken. She says Windows Update is a service that all Microsoft software users should take advantage of. 
Users can take advantage of Windows Update by following a link to the website in their Windows Start menu. The website scans their machine, analyzes what updates apply to their machine, and then allows the user to download and install the updates of their choice. These updates are commonly called patches. Patches can vary in nature. Some can make your computer software more effective, some can make it more compatible with other programs, and some can help it to become more secure. Security patches are important because they help to eliminate software vulnerabilities or other flaws that malicious people might use to try to attack your machine. The recent blaster worm served as proof that downloading regular software updates is a critical step to PC protection. In the scenario of the blaster virus, it was a patch that was already available. Customers could download it. We made extraordinary efforts to try to get customers to uh, apply that patch and protect themselves. Customers who were updating frequently would have received the software update that protected them from the blaster worm before the blaster could have infected their computer. For those who didn't update, Microsoft helped in other ways. We provided real-time information about the worm and how customers can protect their systems or recover if necessary. At peak, we were mobilizing product teams and marketing staffs to help individual customers recover from the damage caused by Blaster. The Microsoft Security Response Center monitors security issues and is constantly keeping track of issues that might cause vulnerabilities or might cause problems for customers. Microsoft has increased security efforts on many fronts. In the last five or six years, Microsoft has added people and budget to our teams that work on security. We implemented a severity rating scale to help customers understand when a security issue is critical and something that they absolutely have to pay attention to right away. We've made our response process higher priority for all groups in the company and better able to respond to reports and protect customers. You can also sign up for a consumer-focused email, and we will tell you when a security issue is at hand and give you advice on how you should deal with that issue at the moment. One of the most user-friendly aspects to the Windows Update service is that you can choose to have it work for you with very little effort on your part. Windows Updates are made available to customers for free. Users can find them by following the link to the Windows Update website from the Start menu in Windows, or they can take advantage of the Automatic Updates feature and set preferences to have the critical updates downloaded and installed for them automatically without having to visit the Windows Update website. The Automatic Updates feature is available for Windows XP, Windows Server 2003, Windows 2000, and Windows Millennium Edition. Microsoft has just announced a new policy where our normal practice will be to release security patches and security updates once a month. But we'll release a security patch whenever we have to to help protect our customers. To be sure that you receive the updates as soon as they're ready, we recommend customers either check the website a few times a week, set their automatic updates feature to install updates daily, or subscribe to the security alert newsletter. That way you assure that if anything happens, you're going to get the latest updates right away. It's best to schedule your auto updates to download at a time when your computer is normally on. These auto updates have some features that make working while they are happening easier. The download service analyzes how much of your connection is consumed by the downloads and then throttles up and down depending on what other applications or services are also attempting to use that same internet connection. An important goal of Windows Update is to operate with as little interruption to your normal computer activity as possible. Simply put, Microsoft wants to make security easy for the user. Your daughter's birthday, your college mascot. We all have passwords we use for things like bank accounts or logging onto your computer. But are they secure? Here are some helpful steps to making your passwords tougher to crack. Did you know that there are a few basic ingredients to a stronger, more secure password? First, the longer the password, the better. We recommend that it be at least seven letters. Also, make sure it's composed of two words that you can remember. Then, make sure that some of your letters are capital and others lowercase. And finally, punctuate it with some other symbols like those found in the uppercase number keys. A longer password with more than one word, mixed cases, and mixed punctuation is more difficult to decode. Speaking of secret codes, we're about to reveal our secret code word, which could be your ticket to winning some great prizes. A Fuji FinePix digital camera, a broadband networking wireless notebook kit with a one-year subscription to MSN Broadband, and Microsoft Plus Digital Media Edition, among the many things we're giving away. 
Just note the code word. The code word is networking. Now go to Microsoft.com slash insider slash live and enter the sweepstakes by submitting the code word. You'll qualify for a chance to win from the prizes we've shown you. One of our prizes is antivirus software, and that's also the third step in increased PC protection. One company that is a leading producer of antivirus software is McAfee. Tracy Holber is a director of product management. By definition, a virus is a program that self-replicates. Holber says that the expansion of technology has come with massive growth of viruses. If you go back to January, there was a, of 2003, a worm called Slammer. At one point, Slammer was scanning 55 million computers a second, looking for vulnerable systems to infect. With statistics like that, it's no surprise that protection technology companies are in a constant scramble to stay ahead of the spread of new viruses. As far as the future of viruses, one can guarantee that they will continue to evolve and the virus writers will continue to try and overcome and work around the security defenses that companies like McAfee put up. And it's our job to make sure that we stay one step ahead of them. With this increase in information exchange across vast numbers of computers, antivirus protection is absolutely critical. Without it, infection is more a matter of when than if. There are today over 60,000 viruses that are known and documented that we have virus definitions for. At any one time, there's anywhere from a dozen to 200 that are what we called in the wild viruses, which are viruses that are actually spreading on the internet. This is one of the labs at Microsoft where security technology is analyzed and tested. Matthew Braverman, a program manager in Microsoft's security business unit, takes us into a fenced section of the lab where some of the more sensitive testing is done. To protect your computer from dangerous viruses and worms, it is essential to use up-to-date antivirus software and a firewall. Braverman is about to give a demonstration using a computer outfitted with typical commercial software. For the purposes of this demonstration, we're going to disable the firewall to show you just how dangerous the internet can be. This is not something you should try with your own PC. With the firewall disabled, viruses that are in the wild are more likely to detect the system. In this case, our computer was attacked in 35 minutes. So we've just disabled the firewall, and as you can see, the antivirus software has detected a virus infecting the system. If we hadn't had antivirus on this machine, the machine would be compromised at this point. The problem with a program that self-replicates is that you have no control over how many copies of itself it makes or what it's going to do when it does reproduce, as it were. It can go anywhere from being a, a denial of service, in other words, meaning that your PC just shuts down, going all the way to infecting and harming your software, your hardware, or your personal information. A virus that you get infected with could send hundreds of emails out, slowing your system down, but if you get tens of thousands of people sending hundreds of emails, the internet itself slows down. The trick for software companies is staying ahead of the virus creators. Every week there are uh, many new viruses created, hundreds uh, per month, and your computer needs to be protected against all of those new strains. There are actually some virus writers who help the antivirus community. Virus writers come in two forms, what we call white hat hackers and black hat hackers. Where we get a lot of our viruses initially so that we can dissect them, if you will, are through the white hat hackers. These are people that typically uncover the vulnerabilities on the internet or in the operating system. They'll write a virus to show how to exploit that vulnerability, and then we'll actually submit those viruses to our research lab so that we can then include that in our signature files. The black hat hackers or virus writers write viruses to cause some type of destruction. Criminals often try to cover their tracks by hopping through multiple systems that they've gained control of, but in many cases, surveillance and backtracking can detect them and find the people who are actually doing this. They often leave a trail and they can be detected and tracked with hard work. While antivirus software and firewalls may seem similar, they do differ, and each plays a significant role in PC protection. The firewall is focused on protecting from d direct attacks on your machine over the internet. Antivirus software protects against hostile programs, whatever their source. 
So you might get a hostile program on a floppy disk as an email attachment or by downloading it over the web. Some PCs come with antivirus software already installed, and in other cases, you need to purchase it. We encourage customers to install and use antivirus software. You can get antivirus software from a number of vendors. We recommend some on our website. If you're not sure if you have antivirus software, you can find out by going to your Start menu and clicking on Program, where the software will be on display. Once you know you have antivirus software, you need to make sure it's up to date. One way that users can make sure that their antivirus product is kept up to date is most antivirus products have uh, the ability to go in and check for updates. So you go into the product, you hit the update button, and it will go and tell you whether you're up to date or not. If your antivirus software is out of date by even a week, your machine may be at risk. A lot of people will be mistaken because when they order a new computer, it comes with an antivirus already installed. But in a lot of cases, those antivirus products are 30-day trials, 90-day trials. The user doesn't then purchase the product and they're left exposed. So make sure you have an antivirus product installed and that it's kept up to date. Most antivirus software has frequent automatic updates. McAfee Virus Scan for the consumer typically checks every two to four hours on the internet to make sure there's not a new signature file that it needs to download. And if we detect that there's a new signature file, we automatically download it and apply it for the user. Antivirus software is an important element to a total security package. Firewall software and antivirus software are very good complements to each other. A firewall software tries to protect your PC by building a shield or a wall around it to have most things bounce off of it. Uh, antivirus software is also very nice because it knows exactly what's attacking you, but it has to know knowledge about that attack before it can protect you. Getting to a basic level of security isn't really hard. There are really three important things that any end user needs to do. Have a firewall to protect from network attacks, be up to date on security patches, and have antivirus software with up to date signatures. We've hosted a website at www.microsoft.com forward slash protect that helps walk you through the specific steps and will even automate the process of locking your system down if you're running on Windows XP. We've been talking about protecting your PC on today's show. And in our sweepstakes, we're actually giving away PC protection software along with other great prizes like a Windows XP Media Center Edition PC, Microsoft Work Suite 2004, and in Carta Reference Library 2004. So if you missed it the first time, here's your last chance to view the code word. The code word is networking. Now go to Microsoft.com slash insider slash live and enter the sweepstakes by submitting the code word. You'll qualify for a chance to win from the prizes we've shown you. Thanks for watching our program on PC security. Hopefully now by following our three basic steps to better security, you can surf more safely.